Okay, so this would be the second video of the Procons. Um, this would be a this will clear up a lot of uh, questions that you had, um, you know, as far as the setup and stuff of that nature. Just remember that the uh, you know the main focus points are setting up your I/O tree properly in both processors. Uh, what we will do. Uh, so what I've done too is <clears throat> I've shrunk the in processor one. I've shrunk the uh, Procon. And I did that because of the limitations that are on, you know, the uh, emulate chassis. Because of the fact of, uh, like, if I went to properties and configured, you know, I'd have to increase the, uh, increase some stuff on it. So without doing that, <clears throat> what I wanted to do is just show that, you know, how it's done. So let's quickly go offline. Okay, so we're offline now, and we're going to add... Um, a better naming culture. So processor one two two processor two. And this will be our produced. So what we'll do over here in our data type is we want to pick our data type that we had that we made and so now we have the data type of, of um, the user defined that we made. Okay, so again, go back to edit, and then base, and this will be the produced. Click apply. Okay, so then in this scenario, we're going to add processor to to. processor one so in this scenario we're going to add the same thing we're going to be prod cons right we're going to be the data type that we made in the user defined out here we're going to accept it um, and we're going to make that a consume but we need to do that first again in our other program so let's go offline I want to shrink the uh, shrink this just like I did in the other one so what I want to do is basically take this down to 20 I want to take the dents down to 20 as well so we'll put that at 20 and then we'll keep uh, the bulls at 96 so basically our flags okay so uh, with this done so we'll put uh, processor one two processor okay so the spelling is off processor two and this is going to be again our data type our our prodcon data type that we made right here all right okay so this is going to be um the stuff from processor 1 to processor 2. So let's go ahead and set that to a consumed data. Okay, so we'll call that processor 1 to processor 2. And the RPIs will keep it 20. So that's basically how fast they, they will talk between the back plane. Okay, so we'll put that, we'll apply, and then we'll make our second tag, which is going to be processor two to processor one. Okay, so this is going to be, again, the data type that we had, so make sure you use that. And this is going to be a produced right and this is because we're producing it we're producing it from the second processor right to the first processor but we're using our data type we're receiving the data on from processor 1 to processor 2 okay so let's go back into processor 1 okay so in processor one we're going to go to edit 
we're going to we're going to put in the consume data we're going to select our, our producer right and then we're going to say processor to to processor one and this is going to be the data that is produced from the processor two to processor one which we're in processor one right now again the rpis which is how fast it will talk back and forth we'll set it 20 as a default you may have to raise that in the real world depending upon how deep you are in your um io tree so if you're like you know a couple layers deep and then you're going through a ethernet card and it's going to another ethernet card and your bridge gets so big uh, but for our instance uh, we're going to keep it quick okay so now that we have those set up um, it's pretty easy to tell who's who and who's what or what's what we'll go ahead and download both of these right so we'll download it and click download and what I'll show you too is, uh, you know, I described to you before, if it's not properly lined up, that you will get a triangle here. Well, I don't have anything downloaded to processor two right now. So I wanted to show you that. Okay. So you notice how down here it says it has a triangle on the processor two. And if I click that, it'll say, it will tell me where the uh, problem is. So right here, see, it tells me that processor 2 to processor 1, that that symbol is not found. So I wanted to kind of highlight this in the second video. Basically kind of how to troubleshoot it if you have any trouble. So now let's go to processor 2 and let's download it. And that should clear up that error because obviously we have it set up properly. And if we don't, hey, we'll fix it. I mean, that's part of what this whole training program is about, is getting you the proper information that we can so that you can build and troubleshoot things how the, the best way you possibly can, right, to, to really kind of get your end game uh, as high as you can go. Okay, so uh, we should go back to processor one and see it cleared it up. So we had everything set up properly. Um, but it had we not had everything set up properly, you know, it's as simple as clicking on that, um, raising the bar down here and checking out what the fault said. So um, <clears throat> with that said, the data that is being let's see that is being from sent from processor to to us is you know we have no data sent right now, right? So let's do that and let's expand that in the same processor. Or in the next processor. So processor two, or processor one, two, processor two. Uh, again, these are the dents, right? So what we'll do is we'll come in and add this. We'll load this this value into a different tag. So processor, we're in processor two, right? So make sure you look at where you're at, right here. That little arrow over here. Uh, we're in processor two. So we want to use this, and then we want to use our first uh, dent. Okay, so now if we go to processor one, we should see values into that, that first dent, right? Okay, so let's go ahead to the produced and consumed, and let's do the same thing in this processor. Okay, so we'll pick our processor one because we're in processor one, right? Well, this is going to be the produced over. We can expand this over if we want to see more. Put that in there and we'll be sending that over there to processor two now. Okay, so let's go to and okay, so we have, uh, and if you want to see it slightly different, like if you want to make sure that this is talking like completely different, let's do this. Let's just to clear up any kind of question. 
Let's use data four. So you can easily distinguish that this is not, and so this is writable, writable data now. Actually, I have to clear it in the other processor. Uh, let's go to, okay, so produced, uh, let's go right here. And if I put that as zero, it will be at zero in the other processor. So uh, again, we're using the stuff we're seeing from processor two to processor one. We're using dent zero, and we're using dent four on processor one, processor two. Let's go to processor two. Processor two is reading dent four now. Okay, so uh, and right here we are using uh, dent zero for the talking to the other processor. So you see the way I normally do things is I would name it in a naming culture of this manner so that I can easily distinguish which processor I need that I'm talking to and talking from. Um, so I'm talking from, in this case, processor two is the processor two to processor one. This would be the produced data, right? Produced data. Okay. In the processor one to processor two, being that we're in processor two, right? This would be the consumed data. Consumed data, and you look at your, what you're consuming right here, right? So you're consuming the data from processor one to processor two. And again, you can name this whatever you want to. Uh, you could name it something completely different. The tag right here, this name and this name do not need to match up in that processor. It just needs to talk. It needs to know the remote data that it's actually looking for. This name and the name inside the other processor have to line up perfectly. But this name and, and the one in, into the processor you're actually in doesn't necessarily need to line up. I like to keep it like that way. Uh, keep it that way just to keep out any kind of confusion and make it easy for anybody coming behind me to read. Okay, so if that kind of clarif clarifies that, uh, processor 1 and processor 2. Um, and then, of course, we're not using the uh, produced time and consumed time anymore, so that can all be zeroed out, right? Um, so go on the other one, and we can zero that out. So if we go back to the other processor, it's everything zeroed out now. So that's everything talking back and forth, you know. So um, again, it's pretty self-explanatory from that point. Hopefully video two cleared up a lot of questions that you have. You know, setting up the produced and consumed, um, making sure that, you know, you use the produced data and you can alias this as well. Uh, so if you wanted to do this, Let's see, let's copy this. And let's just blow this away. Let's say uh, produced time out. Okay, right? And then we'll come in and put alias and then we'll paste this in here. Okay, so, and that token, it's produced out same tag it's just alias now right so if somebody comes behind they can say produce timed out okay so this is produce timed out and this is processor two to processor one. Oh, so okay i'm in processor two okay so this is the stuff i'm sending out so it, see, it makes it easier to read um it makes it just that much more user friendly for the person behind you and that's really the end goal because you don't want to be the guy that is programming that nobody can understand um, so again let's say uh, so produced time out yeah let's just call it time out okay so again base change it to alias uh, put the data in there and we are talking so again they can come behind and say hey this is the produced timeout um and again the naming culture could be different it could be produced data out or whatever but 
the point of it is, is it's easier to read. And uh, so somebody sees this, they can see that it's produced timeout. Okay, so it's produced from pr processor one to processor two, and it's dent four. So if I go in processor two and look at dent four, that's the that's what I'm getting. So whether you use an alias or you don't use an alias, um, it's completely up to you. I think personally, it makes it just I mean, it makes it so so much easier to read. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. And uh, again, the end goal here is to get you the best experience and the, the best exposure to what we're talking about in this training program, this training event. So in the, the process of that, um, hopefully you've got a different perspective to look at things and hopefully you've got um, the base understanding of produced and consumed. So uh, we will be using this probably a little bit differently in, in other programs later on like in the more advanced stuff but to go over this um, lightly is what you know what we've done in video one and video two of produce consumed so hopefully that was helpful and um, it ever tied everything together for you so again we'll pick up on the next section and uh, what we'll do is we'll start you know we might dig into like one or two more things and then get into uh, add-on instructions. I think we'll probably go ahead and do add-on instructions next, being that uh, ladder logic is pretty much the common logic that everybody uses. And, um, you know, I think it'd be better beneficial that way. You know, just go ahead and do uh, add-on instructions next. Okay, so, all right, uh, to wrap this video up, uh, just want to clarify that, uh, you know, like I said, this is pretty easy to read, and uh, I think it is, you know, so just make sure you know, you know, the, you know, the processor, you know, how to set them up in the IO tree, how to set up the uh, tags, you know, and how to find the tags. So let's look at consumed. This is everything consumed in that processor, right? So if I want to just quickly find that, I can go right here. If I want to look at what I'm producing, I can quickly go in here and see the same thing, right? Or if I want to look at everything all together, you know, however you want to do it. This just gives you an easy way to, to kind of troubleshoot it. If you want to see what you're producing, consuming, um, then you can use this for much more stuff than that. But um, anyway, so uh, just to kind of close this video out, uh, like I said, uh, this is produce and consume conclusion. So hopefully this gave you a lot better perspective on how to set things up and, and uh, troubleshoot it. And... Uh, Keep on, uh, keep on on the next uh, next video, and we'll probably be getting into uh, add-on instructions. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks.